stop the idea around like I'll do a photo shoot when I'm ready. I'll do a photo shoot when I'm key ready. I'll do a photo shoot when I'm like at my knees. It's like I'm good enough right now today. Like I feel sexy and beautiful today. I have been seeing the amazing Ray here. Uh, we've been seeing each other for I think a little over three years, and basically I have had a couple major injuries since I've been here. So my first back injury, I was here doing physical therapy at Pro Sport, and then I started supplementing with Ray's services. And then slowly but surely, I ended up stopping physical therapy and then only being with Ray. So we got through my first back injury, and then later when my back flared up again, we got through my second back injury. And then at ADCC, when I hurt my knee, I was here working on my knee with him. And now it's just like overall maintenance and health and lifestyle. There's a lot more to say about what Ray has taught me because I would say that the main thing is not the actual work. I mean, the work we do here is great. Like I love being here in these appointments. It's like the highlight of my week when I get to come. And I still drive from like, I just drove from Palm Desert to come here. So I drove like over two hours to be here because it's not worth it to me. But the other aspect of it is the, what I've learned about my body over the years. Like the lessons I have learned about how to treat my body when I'm not here is something that has really changed my relationship with my body overall. So that's been really powerful. Hi, my name is Ray <laughs> Roman. I'm a doctor in physical therapy and doctor in acupuncture. I started uh, Balance Point Therapy in 2015. I've been doing dry needling since 2011. Um, and uh, what we do is called integrated sports acupuncture. So it's a combination of four different techniques. First, we start with uh, sports acupuncture, dry needling, dynamic cupping, and active release. We use those four techniques to improve range of motion, function, minimize inflammation in the body, and just kind of overall decompress the body. Um, a lot of times we work with a lot of different athletes that they're in this sympathetic state. So they're just kind of really tight and tissues are tight, mind is tight, body is tight and they're in a desperation mode where things have maybe plateaued in certain sort of realms. So they're just kind of looking to kind of get over the hump or seeing if something can help bridge the gap to kind of speed it up a little bit. So that's kind of our, our little role. We just try to help bridge the gap and try to work together um, as part of the team. Uh, we don't try to be the team. We just a part of the team just to really kind of help them um, get to that next level common theme or story that I hear when Ray discusses like his work is for a lot of people it's their last stop like they've tried so many things and then finally they were like okay let me go see this guy my friend keeps telling me about or whatever and that's definitely has been my experience like I've seen so many like specialists and famous Instagram people mm -hmm. and they had you know all these guys in the NFL giving them these great reviews and I've actually gotten like worse with some of those people and it's not necessarily a knock on like one practitioner or another it's just that for me I have found that like my relationship with Ray is like he's the expert and he has a lot to teach and a lot to give but for the most part like I he allows space for me to lead the way and it's like a two-way relationship instead of like here it's, I'm gonna tell you exactly what we're gonna do it's gonna take six weeks and this is the protocol and then you're gonna be fixed and there's a lot of like well, I don't know, let's try this or let's try that or what do you think? And I think for that reason, it's become a relationship where it's like, oh no, this is something that I keep for my entire life. Not because I'm desperately in pain anymore, thank God, but because I know that it makes a big difference compounding like week after week, month after month. Even if I can't come in for a month or two if I'm traveling, like I always find my way back. <laughs> I, can't, I can't stay away. So it's been really good. Today I think we're just going to decompress though. I think my body is like pretty healthy overall and feeling good injuries are have been kept at bay but I was sick last week we were saying like my nervous system has a heavy load right now of a lot of life changes going on and a lot of um, stress not necessarily is like oh I'm so stressed out but a lot of stressors that add stress to the nervous system and that's one of the things Ray has taught me too like when there's a lot of stuff going on we become more injury prone whether we feel it or not like necessarily like my back might not be sore but because my nervous system is, is that how you would say it like things are just heavy like yeah he's, he's mm -hmm. like he's such a proud teacher over here i'm like uh, yes i'm uh, a good student i remember uh, one of the biggest things we talk about is like you're your best doctor right so um, i would say all of us practitioners are highly educated um, but um, in the end we don't know your body right the way you know it so you know your body best um, you know what you're feeling um, we have three rules um, first one don't poke the bear second one don't work through pain to help pain and third one, trust the process. So the biggest thing is just making sure that um, the athletes know what the bear is, right? Making sure they're not sitting here poking it and re-aggravating tissue that is trying to heal. So it's just trying to, how can we get the surrounding tissue to do its work? And then in the end, just allow that tissue to kind of take care of itself.
That's good right there. Let's go right side. So these aren't like perpendicular how we do. We're just trying to decompress the spine here. There's different sizes where I'll show you which are kind of mm -hmm. cool. So this one is it's a three incher. Right, so there's a three incher, there's a one incher. Wow. Yeah, it just mm -hmm. it, it just really depends. Um, usually on in in the glutes, we're gonna use like a three incher, and it seems like oh my gosh, that mm -hmm. seems crazy. But honestly, they've you know doing the right technique on the right area it should feel pretty good. Um, but sometimes tissue is really restricted, and then also, um, I got a lady coming in later this week. This is a, a seven incher, okay, and then I'll have a five incher. So with her, I'll use actually a five incher on the glutes only because the three incher, it really doesn't um, allow her tissue to like even be affected at all. Mm -hmm. So everyone's gonna be totally different. It's not just, well with athletes you use bigger needles, yeah. some athletes are use smaller needles. The goal is how do you get them and their tissue to calm down? It doesn't matter what size the needle you're mm -hmm. using and so forth, so. So we're at Black Market Bakery, which is like my favorite coffee shop and also a food place. Um, can't find my chapstick. Oh, I found it. So anyway, we're at Black Market and uh, we have like a hour break in between things. So oftentimes I find myself trying to give myself like an hour in between appointments if I can. And then what happens is I end up trying to catch up on like work and emails during that time. So I find like I have multiple slots throughout the day where I do a lot of my like communications and my work. So like approving things for staff members and getting back to people and sending emails out and talking to my JJA clients and all of that stuff. So that's what we're doing here today. And it's just a shooting day. So it's a little bit different because what we're going to go do is we're going to meet up with Erica in Laguna and we're going to do a photo shoot today. So we're going to be at the beach, we're going to do a little photo shoot. But I didn't plan very well for today and I left all my makeup at Chris's house. This is like my backup makeup that, so we may just do a bare face look. I don't know what we're gonna do yet. We're gonna figure it out. I also have no idea what I brought to wear. I have this cute little lemon shirt, but I also have just like a trunk full of random clothes. So what I do know is we have coffee. So we're gonna make it through the whole thing. Mm. And can't complain, Laguna's beautiful. I get to spend time with women that I think are amazing. We're gonna have a beautiful time and you know, I'll talk more about this a little bit later, but a big part of what Eric and I wanted to do was stop the idea around like, I'll do a photo shoot when I'm ready. I'll do a photo shoot when I'm bikini ready. I'll do a photo shoot when I'm like at my leanest. It's like, I'm good enough right now today. Like I feel sexy and beautiful today. Like, let's just do it. Like, what am I waiting to like lose 10 pounds to do a photo shoot? Like, let's do it right now. This is how I look. Like, I don't need the lie of like, posting my leanest pictures forever for the rest of my life and always going back to one photo shoot when I was like cutting weight or had a six pack and like, yeah, I'm gonna use those photos forever. Like, that's a lie. Like, that's not real life. Like, I look like this today and I love how I look. I'm happy with my body. I appreciate the health that I have. And so that's what we wanted to do. Bye. Okay, I'm Erica Arenas. I am, I can't even say part-time photographer, full-time stay-at-home mom, um, jiu-jitsu hobbyist, big fan of Kendall. <laughs> So, met her at ADCC last year, I think. Yeah, yeah. I like, when we slowly started becoming friends, yeah. and then, did I post on my story, or did I reach out to you directly? I think I posted on my you story. You posted on your story, and I, sh I, shoot my, I shot my shot. I was like, hey, I, I want to do, my shot. Yeah, yeah, I shot my shot. <laughs> I was like, I want to do a photo shoot, and the whole premise was that I was tired of having that feeling. This was like last year, I had gained weight after ADCC, after not being able to exercise and just having like being so bedridden for yeah. like months. I mean, not totally, but like it was rough compared to what I normally did. And I was like, in, I was like up a body, like up a size in my clothing. And I was like trying to figure out, well, let me re say that. I put, a thing, I put a thing on my story because I was up a size in clothing after ADCC because I, I'd gained some weight, my exercise wasn't the same, and I was just feeling very uncomfortable, and I kept having this feeling of like, oh, I really wanna do a photo shoot, like, I'm not training so much right now, like, now's the time to like, get girly and do all these things, and I had this thought of like, oh, but I need to wait until I like, go back to my normal weight, because I don't wanna have these photos like, forever as this weight, because this weight is not good enough. And I remember like, my reaction to that thought, like, I'm so, grateful that I have enough recovery like coming from eating disorder recovery background like I'm grateful that I have enough recovery and mindset work these days 
that my immediate reaction was like, oh, we have to get in action against that thought now. Like I need to not just like tell myself the affirmations, like, oh no, I'm beautiful how I am, like all that. That's great, but I needed action too to like back it up, to prove to myself like, oh, do you really mean that? Like that's the level that I'm at with affirmations. Yeah. Like I need to be in action also. So I posted this thing on my story and I was like, you know what? I need to do a photo shoot right now as is in this body because I don't need to lie and post six pack pictures for the rest of my life and use that one photo shoot that I have where I like look this certain thing and then that's my whole Instagram feed and like lie about it because like that's not who I am like I'm in this body I'm in this body right now like this is good enough like this body is good enough this body is beautiful like let me capture that and that was like in action going against those like disordered thoughts that I am you know, have been working to unwire as an adult. I was dealing with like a lot of postpartum stuff and so this was my goal was, well one going up to you was like a huge deal for me <laughs> and, but I was doing a lot of boudoir in, in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, you live there with your husband? Yeah, I live in the military, yeah, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So did a lot of boudoir and like self-empowerment shoots and stuff like that is kind of my thing and so when you were talking about that I was like oh my god like you inspire me so if I could like kind of do that for you like that like full circle like that would be kind of cool so, so cool. yeah so now here we are I think like sometimes when you know I've talked a lot about my struggles with body image and body positivity on social media and people relate to it but there's it's one thing to talk about the struggles and have people relate but I think also like I want to walk the walk of being like do I really mean the things that I say you know and I'm human like it's easy when I was a little bit heavier post ADCC to have that insecurity of like oh no I'm just gonna wait to do a photo shoot later like I don't want to use those photos for anything I don't want to capture this moment I want to pretend it didn't happen right like I'm gonna get past this and then act like it wasn't I, I never was that wait but the truth is like that is feeding into the disease of or you know the disordered thinking of eating disorders like what and whatever you feed grows so if I feed that and I go along with that that thing gets stronger but if I feed that feeling of like oh fuck that like I'm enough right now I'm beautiful as is let me capture this moment because this is the truth and this is real and let me appreciate the body man because I will never be in this body again and I don't want to be 50 and looking back on when I was 25 and think like man I beat myself so much up so much about how much I weighed that I didn't capture like the young beautiful woman that I am. And I dating in the summer of 20 what year are we in 2024 we started dating in the summer of 2022 and uh, so my birthday is in October so the first birthday that we were together my the first well his birthday is in October too but the first the first one of mine that we were together he had the cutest like he smashed it out of the park honestly set the bar way too high uh, for our like relationship at the top each year but I was at a Who's Number One, and it was the Grand Prix. I was commentating and interviewing at a Grand Prix, and I was in Austin, and my sister lives there, so I was like, you know what, I'll just stay there an extra day and do my birthday there, because her boyfriend and I have the same exact birthday, and I'm already in Austin on the 28th, so I was like, I'll just stay the 29th. So I flew to Austin, I'm doing my thing, I have my show, and I get this text um, from Chris about the show, and he's like, oh yeah, like you look great, babe, like you're doing amazing, like so sweet, like oh, I love watching you commentate, said some other little, little sassy comments as well when those are not YouTube approved. <laughs> and uh, what she likes to do when I'm in the show because then I'm like on the sideline reading my text and it's, you know. So then at the show ends, I'm like leaving and I'm going out and Jake Watson had gotten me uh, up from my seat and he was like, hey, there's something outside. 
and we like go outside and Chris is there and I was like in total shock because he was like telling me all the stuff he was doing in California. He's like, oh yeah, I was teaching today and da da da. It was just a normal day, like normal day and he shows up and it was so sweet. Swoops me up, takes me to this amazing hotel that was like a castle. It was like so beautiful. I had dinner planned. I mean, everything was taken care of. It was like amazing. Every little detail that he could have gone right, smashed it. Then we get to the hotel and I actually get my birthday gift, as if that wasn't enough of a gift already. And he pulls out this custom made necklace, um, this solid it. gold necklace that is of my logo. So my logo is the K with the heart. I put on everything, it's like on all of my stuff. And he gives this to me and it was like one of those gifts where it was so thoughtful I almost started crying. And I'm not like an easily happy crier. Like I like it and I get really happy and that's fine but like it just doesn't come out. But I did almost start crying. I got choked up and there was this beautiful card and I read the card and it was this. And I think it was one of the most, it was so thoughtful because he could have gotten anything as a necklace. He could have just gotten a gold necklace. He could have gotten his initial. He could have like a lot of girls like that. And that's really sweet. Like it's not that I wouldn't wear a C or anything. Like I, I love that. But it was, you know, we were together for only a couple months at the time and he made sure that this would be so personalized for me that it was something that like I would want to wear forever. And I think when someone does that for you and who you are rather than making it about them, which is easy to do, like for me, like I like to get gifts people, gifts for people as an experience that we can do together. But then, yes, it's a good gift, but it still relates to me. This literally had nothing to do with him at all. It was just all about Kendall and it was all just something for me to have. I can't show my hands like Ariana Grande, but also, I'm a psychotic person. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I was imitating Ariana Grande. I'm not <laughs> psychotic. <laughs> Day. We had ice cream, we had modeling, and I think the main message for me for today, well one, obviously is a big thank you to Erica and Michelle, like it, for girls out there who don't know if they want to do this kind of thing because you don't feel like you're maybe in the perfect body that you want to be in, or your makeup doesn't look right, or you have acne, or like whatever it is that we all go through, like I think one of the most healing things is to just do it anyway, like do it uncomfortable because we were just talking about this when we were walking on the beach, but there was this one time this video, I think it was on TikTok, this lady was talking about, she's an elderly woman and she was saying like, I wish that I would have known that one day I would look back on my younger self with much kinder eyes. And I would see that girl who didn't know that she was enough and I wish that I could go back and tell her to enjoy exactly where she was because you'll never get it again. So for me, it was like, it, honestly, even right now, today, in this moment, like, I love the fuck out of who I am, but even I have days where I look in the mirror and I'm like, oh, like, five pounds, or oh, this, or oh, my acne, or oh, like, my hair isn't, whatever, it's not blonde enough, like, there's all the things, right, or my social media is not big enough, and I wish I had, I wish I was 
all the things that we can all relate to, or so many of us can relate to, is just do it anyway. Because whatever you feed is gonna get stronger. So if I feed the, I am the girl who wants to go and take a photo shoot with two of her girlfriends and be like, yes, queen, on the whole time <laughs> with people you know you do the same back for. Like, I wanna be that girl. And I can step into choosing to be that girl at any moment. So it's like, my advice is not only to do it anyway, but support yourself with love. Go with women who can cheer you on. Or go by yourself and set up a tripod. Like, you're, there's so many ways to write the story of the woman or the girl that you want to become. And you get to choose it every single time you make a choice. You get to step into that. So it's like, today I could have let so many things stop me from doing this, but instead I had women around me who are wonderful, supportive, beautiful women. And I decided when I looked in the mirror, like, Today is going to be fun. Today is about celebrating who I am right now in the moment, not who I think I should be someday. Right? So it's like today we're enough. We had so much fun. Yeah, we did. So I can't say thank you enough. Do it anyway.